another podcast in our series, Leading in the Public Interest, brought to you by MacArthur's Talent Architects Division. Through the lens of local government, we look at the issues and people shaping the way our public sector organisations operate to enhance the life of the communities they serve. In pre-COVID days, in what seems like a lifetime ago, our first podcast featured Amanda Stone, a councillor from the city of Yarra, who was using her MacArthur Fellowship to examine how deliberative democracy can lead to greater contribution from the local community into council's decision-making processes. Today, we continue the theme of community involvement in decision-making and look at how one council has tried a different approach to bring young people into the process. Southern Downs Regional Council is situated in southeast Queensland and is based around four major population centres, Warwick, Alora, Killarney and Stanthorpe. Joining me today from that council are Michael Bell and Liam Gow. Michael is the Manager of Community and Cultural Services at Southern Downs Regional Council. He is an experienced manager in local government and has been at Southern Downs for nine years. In his role, he's responsible for community development, disaster management and libraries. He first became interested in the idea of a youth council in 2018 and has taken a leading role in promoting the idea of a youth council at Southern Downs Regional Council. Liam Gow is a 16-year-old student who is currently enrolled in Stanthorpe State High School. He's interested in pursuing a career in mechatronics and engineering after completing his high school education. He was a member of the Southern Downs Youth Council in 2019 and is now an ex-youth council member. On the Youth Council, he was responsible for representing Stanthorpe State High School and voicing his and his peers' opinions on what the Council could do to better life in Southern Downs. Liam and Michael, thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Alan. Thank you for having us. Not a problem. Pleasure to be here. So um, perhaps we could start with you, Michael. How and why did the idea of a Youth Council come up? Thanks, Alan, a great question. So the idea of the Youth Council come up in about 2017. It come up during a period of uh, when the organisation was going through a level of change and there was recognition that from the Southern Downs perspective uh, and from a community perspective, we weren't really engaging with our youth very well. And there was an opportunity to reinvigorate the way we actually went out and spoke to our youth and got their ideas on board. Michael, there were probably a range of different ways you could have looked at engaging with young people in the Southern Downs area. Why a youth council? The reason we went about taking a youth council is I call it the uh, the triangle. What we what we had historically not done, we had spoken to youth in various forms, but not really engaged with them. The idea of the Youth Council allowed us to both engage with the youth themselves, so particularly those in the year 10 or 16 year old bracket. It allowed us to engage with all our high schools across the region. So historically, we've got 10 high schools um, across the region that we didn't really talk to that much. Um, And as you can appreciate, they've got all our youth and a captured audience. So it gave us an opportunity to work with both the schools and the youth but it also allowed us to engage with the youth and their parents. So uh, again, from a community point of view, what historically we've done is we've targeted a particular group, but we haven't targeted all three groups at once. And so by using the Youth Council as a platform, allowed the council to engage with the Youth Council's families, but also the schools, which are critical to this approach. So, uh, Michael, the the idea has come up, um, you've developed it, and then you've had to take it to both your elected uh, representatives and to senior council officers. How hard was it getting their acceptance of this idea? Again, initially it was fairly problematic because one thing that councils tend to do is we do our rates, rubbish and roads very well, but we tend to forget about engagement and how to to, uh, move that forward. So there was a number of meetings that I had to attend with the council and also senior managers to explain why we're going down this path and basically the advantages that it would provide us as a council, particularly around influencing 
future strategy and vision documents. I attended council and, uh, and also spoke to senior managers on a number of occasions, continually explaining the benefits, uh, which over a period of time allowed us to get that traction and buy-in. What, what concerns did they have, Michael, that you had to address in getting them on board with the idea of the Youth Council? So probably the biggest one was the uh, the, the level of well, the, the concern that it, when we engage with the, uh, the youth, would they have the maturity to be able to respond to the needs of the council? So, um, you know, you've got a, a, a youth which ranges anywhere from 12 to 25, and we targeted the, the 16 age bracket deliberately. And the reason we did that is they're at a level where they are starting to mature as young adults. They have a deeper understanding of what happens within the community. So being able to explain that to the council that we are now dealing with adolescents but young adults who want to make their, want to make their mark in the world, uh, want to influence outcomes and actually have some fa fairly fantastic ideas was where we got buy-in. So we had a few students who uh, were working with us and they were able to put forward some suggestions which allowed us to get that traction. Right, so the, you say you had some youth working with you. So uh, what, what was their role in determining the makeup of the council, the way it would function, and the other uh, issues just with um, how to organise it and operate it? Yeah. So prior to the youth council, Alan, we had what we call the Young Ambassadors, which was a variant of the current form, but it was hand-picked a select no number in a small um, cohort as such. Generally, those students were either in year 12 or above. Um, and so the feedback we got when we first, when I first picked those guys up was that we were probably, one, aiming at the wrong target group because their focus in year 12, as you can appreciate, is trying to finish off their year and prepare for university. It was also we were putting too much responsibility on them. And the biggest thing they explained is we weren't really engaging with the broader youth in their schools. What that allowed us to do is to have a rethink and to realise that by taking all high schools or looking at all high schools as a cohort and bringing them on board would give us greater traction. So we use that feedback to influence particularly our procedures and our policies that govern this approach and put those back in front of council. So how did you identify and attract young people to come on board with being youth counsellors? So initially, and I'll, I'll lead in with Liam here shortly because he came in, I think it was the second or third year, but initially part of my role was to go out and, and engage directly with the high schools. So speaking to the principals, explaining to them what we wanted to achieve, what we were looking for as an outcome, but also what the high schools wanted to see as part of that youth council. So they um, basically said to us they wanted to see a youth council membership which had some opportunity to participate in civic events or community events, so it wasn't just a forum that allowed us to garner ideas from the Youth Council, but allowed these Youth Councils to show and demonstrate from their backgrounds and their schools how they could contribute to the community. So, in, for example, on Anzac Day, for Australia Day, they would participate in some of those civic events. But we also, the schools mentioned that if we held a lot of these Youth Councils in their backyard, so at the schools, it allowed the schools also to sell what each school brought to both their schooling network, but also to the broader community. We also used the youth council that time. So at the end of each year, they would also influence what the following year would look like to ensure that we kept matching and getting this right. So I probably would hand across to Liam about how he found that experience because he has probably first-hand experience of what he was able to contribute from a youth council perspective. Liam, why did you decide to get involved? What was attractive for you about this idea? So the Youth Council gave me the opportunity to really voice my opinion within my community. I had grown up in a family where politics had been a very major thing. My father is actually one of the councillors and he's one of my biggest role models. And I looked at him and I thought I, I would mind getting in that position later in life. And when I got into Year 10 and the Youth Council came an opportunity for me to really get out there and voice what I wanted to change, I just grabbed it by the horns and I really, I really enjoyed it. So 
So, Liam, could you could you tell us a little bit about how the Youth Council operates? So, from what I saw, you've got uh, twenty members, but how is it structured? Do you have a chairperson or uh, the equivalent of a mayor? How often do you get together? How do you create your agendas? Those sorts of things, just at an operational level. So the chair of the meetings was typically the mayor herself. Um, as I was on the council last year, um, Tracy Doby would run the meetings. Councillors were also allowed to sit in and uh, watch the meetings. Typically, the youth councillors were just arranged around a table. They were allowed to sit next to friends if they wanted, or they could sit next to other people to break the ice between each other. Um, agendas were, you know, they were typically stuff from previous meetings or um, certain points that the mayor would want us as the youth to discuss. It's Michael, I'll just, just add to that. So what Liam is explaining is the agenda was a structured agenda. Um, which the, the chair or the mayor generally would, would help frame. Some of the agenda items were driven by the schools and the youth council themselves. So, for example, last year, and Liam will, will recall because he was quite active in the debate, we are a region which has suffered three years' worth of drought. One of the items tabled by the youth council, which you know we were blown away by, was around drought and water security. And that came from... You know, the youth council membership, the 16-year-olds, it wasn't driven by council, so they actually influenced that agenda. So, so what kind of issues typically does the youth council look at? So, uh, Alan, again, it's Michael. So the youth council can look at things which uh, impact them directly. So as Liam knows, um, we're being a smaller rural community, there are a lot of opportunities that the youth council generally don't get that they would on the east coast so they were able to influence opportunities that they could partake so for example we ran a youth event last year so it was a three-day event which allowed the, the youth to go and attend and do outdoor recreational activities as a group or as a cohort because historically and traditionally with our distances these youth can't come together we had the youth talk about um, as i said the drought and the challenges that the drought has brought, particularly with water security. So at the moment, in this particular um, community, as Liam is fully aware, we are trucking water into our community at the moment. But we asked the Youth Council to help um, historically influence some of our vision statements from a council perspective. So as we set our future four, five, six year vision, they will, will come in and they'll actually help shape that. And you know, Liam might want to talk about some of that and how He's participating in influencing those aspects. So one of the things that we pressed through the Youth Council is we looked at how, it's a very typical thing, but how we could introduce more entertainment facilities to our region because as the youth were always looking for something to do, we looked at it in the sense where we should trial certain things to actually take data to the council to say, hey, this was successful, this wasn't. So maybe you could look into implementing these kind of strategies. Another one we looked at, as Michael said, was we talked a lot about water sustainability. Each school, when they hosted a meeting, was allowed to put forward one point that they wanted to discuss. We also talked about aged care and how we could bridge the gap between citizens that live in aged care and youth, which we implemented a day where youth were allowed to visit aged care homes and engage in activities with the elderly members of our community? These are very substantial issues that you're looking at, Liam. So how do the deliberations of the Youth Council then feed into um, the, the way Southern Downs Regional Council uh, looks at and, and uh, addresses the issues, you know, like the water sustainability, like um, sort of the aged care that you've just mentioned. Hey, Alan, uh, it's Michael again. Liam's, Liam's asked me to pick up this question because it's around the governance. So what generally happens is the agenda is tabled. Uh, in this case, if it's an activity or it's about water sustainability, there'll be a, a level of debate that the chair allows to occur. At the end of that debate, uh, the Youth Council are then asked to pass a recommendation, and that recommendation is put before Council 
for council to make a resolution on. So when we talk about the three day event that we ran for youth um, last year, which was an outdoor event, uh, basically what it allowed the youth council to do is to garner support from the council and a budget of about $30,000 to run an event. Likewise, when we've looked at activities around um, vision statements, for example, as they've put suggestions and recommendations forward around how council should look longer term at some of its aspirations, they go before the council, so the broader council, and a resolution is made. So once it's a resolution of council, that basically is the local government's policy, and we have an obligation then to be sure, which gives the youth um, some certainty and a surety that what they're putting forward not only has merit but will gain traction and will go somewhere. So historically, again, when they put these ideas forward, they never went to council, whereas now they're all going before council, including any minutes that are taken. So it's really elevated the platform of our youth and their concerns at a level that once they probably would never have got. Yeah. Liam, how hard is it to um, find people, like 20 people per year, to be involved in the Youth Council? Well, from each school, they were to put forward two representatives. Um, typically, it was one boy and one girl. Schools were allowed to do two boys or two girls if they didn't have enough volunteers. But just for example, from my school, there was actually eight students from the 16-year cohort that put their hand up and requested to represent Stanthorpe State High School. And how the, how the teacher running it decided to select the representatives is they asked us to answer a question, which was why do you think you will do a good job representing our school and what skills do you have to support that? And how did the school choose the two representatives to go to the Youth Council? Yeah, um, they gave us two questions, which was, why do you think you would do a good job of representing Stanford State High School and what skills do you have to support that? It was just a simple paragraph and then the teachers would compare them to each of the students' paragraphs and then they would select the two best. Right, so the decision ultimately was taken by the teaching staff at the school uh, as to who would be the representatives to the Youth Council. Yeah, the principal had the final say, as overall he was the one that governed whether or not the students would participate in the Youth Council. Well, Liam, uh, how often does the Youth Council come together? Um, we had four meetings, which was one per school term and each meeting was located at a different school location. Issues of getting people, I imagine uh, you, you're having to travel reasonable distances to get to those meetings. Um, how, how did people get to the meetings physically? Well, it depends. Most of the time um, a teacher would actually bring the students to the location. If not, parents were allowed to drive their um, children to the meetings and then they could just drop them off and then come pick them up once the meetings had concluded. So typically how long did the meetings go for? Um, most of the meetings went for about four hours. During that time we were um, shown around the school that we had attended and we had breaks for morning tea, lunch, and in between all that, we were discussing matters. So, so Liam, what, what impact has your involvement on the Youth Council had on you personally? And secondly, how do you think it's impacted the way young people engage with and participate in the life of their community? Me personally, um, it's really, like I said earlier, it's really given me an opportunity to voice my opinion. Um, as a youth, I can look at the council and I can see what they've done is targeted at certain audiences. And having the youth council really allows them to understand what the youth thinks they should and shouldn't be doing for the younger generations of the community. 
And, and how do you think it's impacted the way young people engage with their communities generally? Well, I think it's really opened their eyes to the fact that they can also voice their opinion. Like that's a main thing about the Youth Council. It's that it really lets students understand that they can tell people their point of view on our community and what it gives them the ability to change what we do in our society. So, Liam, you spoke earlier on about your father being your role model. He was a member or is a member of the Southern Downs Regional Council and that's something that you figured that down the track you would also like to become. Has the Youth Council confirmed that for you or has it made you question whether that's the right way to go? Well, it will take me some time to build up my representation to actually get voted into the council. But having this sort of thing like I have been a member of the Youth Council shows the community that I am willing to dedicate my time to representing our community. Um, definitely not that being on the Youth Council has made me question. It has made me, if not solidify the fact that I do want to follow a political path as I believe that having opportunities like this really builds my experience and gives me a better idea of how I would govern an area if I was to get elected in the future. Great. Liam, have you spoken with any of the other youth councillors and how they have felt about the experience of being on the youth council? I have. Um, most of them, it took till about was about the second meeting before they started to really relax. It was mainly just breaking the ice was the main problem because we had never met each other before besides the people that came from the same school. By the second meeting, we were really just having long conversations with each other and talking about issues that we believed were problems that we as the youth could address. Um, most of the students really brought their opinions and at some point, we even had a full-fledged debate as to one of the points that a student had raised, which the mayor was very impressed by. So, so Liam, if somebody came to you from one of the schools and asked you why they should get involved in the Youth Council, what would you tell them? I actually had the opportunity to do this with the next set of um, Year 10s that were coming through. And I mainly stuck to the point where it's just an opportunity to really voice your opinion. That's a main thing about it. It's an opportunity that really allows you to get out there, meet people from around the region, um, let the council know what you think. And most of the time, the rest of the councillors are thinking exactly what you are. And it really helps you get your point across to them. And soon enough, you will see your change. Great. So um, to both of you, but perhaps Michael might want to um, start off uh, answering the question. What words of advice do you both have for a council thinking of establishing a youth council? Well, if, if a council was thinking of establishing a youth council, the first piece of advice I would tell them is they've got to go in and be prepared to listen. If they go in with a preconceived idea of what a youth council looks like, it won't um, get up. So in, in our particular case, before we formed and locked in a particular idea, we spoke to the schools, we spoke to some of the youth and we spoke to their parents, and we continue to do that along the way. The second piece of, of advice I would make is that um, don't underestimate the youth. Uh, every year I've been blown away on how much information and willingness to provide information these young youth have. Um, they are a wealth of experience. They have a lot more knowledge than generally what people give credit for. And what tends to happen is things that we, we have investigated, say, 15 years ago, a lot of these kids hadn't been born at that age. And so what they really do is shine a light on some of these challenges to say we need to reconsider those ideas and to see whether or not that is still relevant. So. I would encourage any council going down this path to not go in with a blinkered view um, because ultimately it's these youth which we're running our communities 
So we might as well start to engage now, get it right and have them influence what that looks like. But also if we can influence now and have them participate, then we'll have a, an opportunity from a community point of view of, of having continuous change. And Liam, what advice would you give a council considering this idea? Um, overall, I would highly recommend it. It really isn't every day that you get to get in touch with the youth on that level. And the, like Mike was saying, the total amount of information that we were able to put forward really gave the council a good idea on what the youth wanted to see in their community. Although the council typically focuses on sustainability, the youth was more pushing for stuff that they could bring to our community to really start changing the way it operates. So to both of you, uh, thank you for joining us today. It's been really interesting and insightful to hear about how Southern Downs Regional Council has gone about trying to engage with young people, not just to get their input into decisions that are being taken, but also to think about how uh, you create the, the future generations of leadership for your communities. So I, I'd like to thank you both for your time and wish you all the very best for the future. No problem, Alan. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Alan. Not at all. You're very welcome. You've been listening to an interview with Michael Bell and Liam Gow from Southern Downs Regional Council. In the interview, we focused on the Youth Council that Southern Downs have initiated in an attempt to both involve young people in decision making about what's going on in their community and to look at ways that they can build and um, involve future generations at Southern Downs Regional Council. This is Alan Price from MacArthur's Talent Architects Division, thanking you for joining us and thanking Lynn Dang, who is the producer of our program, and Gideon Price, who wrote and recorded the music. Until we meet again, stay safe and well. Mm -hmm.